Welcome back to the channel, Flats Class YouTube. Today, we're gonna do April's top five inshore baits, and we're gonna do it over there in the shop. You're gonna wanna know what they are because you can't catch one of these unless you got a couple of these in your tackle bag. So let's head on over there and talk about it. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Like I said in the intro, there, there are no hard and fast rules once we start getting to this point in spring. April is that month when everything is in play. Uh, we're not worried about having the consistent water temperatures anymore. They're consistent because the fronts, especially here in my region of Florida, they even when they have some precipitation and some wind and maybe the weather cools off for if you're lucky two maybe three days it's not enough to make any hard changes and every natural signifier out there of spring uh, is there now so nothing's changing so that puts a lot of the larger baits into play and i say this when i do these bait videos all the time you know, you pick the brand that you want to uh, you know that you favor, that you play with, and, and you use them. Don't don't worry about appeasing the brands that support me. I wish you would, but don't worry about it. These are just kind of a loose framework of what you can work within, and I'm just trying to put you in the know for this time of year because I'm on the water almost every day, not only creating content, but I still have a regular guide clientele. Um, that I need to service, even though I am getting to that point where I want to retire, that's not going to happen anytime soon. So let's talk about, well, I'll tell you what, let's do this first. I want to tell you guys about some of these brands that support Flats Class YouTube, because it's important that you guys understand that I can't do this every day, and I do this every day without these brands supporting us. And one of the, the brands that has come on as of late is Bates Fishing. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, check them out. This is a brand new drop that they have from Bates Fishing Company. It's their OG reel. Uh, a really killer looking old school round reel. I'll let you just take a look at it in the packaging. I've got a video coming out soon. But this is the, uh, the kind of brand that produces high quality equipment that I like to have relationships with because not everyone can can be on a pro staff like that and it's nice that they considered me and uh, I think my audience is the perfect audience to look to look into those reels so if you haven't checked out the Bates Fishing Company you should go over there and check it out they make some high quality solid uh, solid aluminum frame uh, fishing reels that are all one piece and uh, they've got a dual matrix braking system. Um, these reels are much lighter than you think and the tolerances on these reels, I promise you, is of the highest quality. Uh, I've, been, I've been using them over the last few months and I'm really impressed. And I was first introduced to them because it's not like I sought them out or they sought me out. I was introduced to them by an actual customer of mine who let me try one. And I went out and bought one. Then I bought a second one. Then I bought a third one. Then I thought, you know what? I've got a problem here. I actually need to go over there and talk to these people. And here we are. Okay, let's break down the baits. We're going to start with number five. We're going to work up to number one. I think you're not going to be surprised who number five is. Number five, when you get to this time of the year in the spring, let me open up my, my tackle box here. For me, I put this under a blanket statement, Miradines. Miradines are definitely getting the call in a lot of places. It's just not the west coast of Florida. These are going to work everywhere down the east coast of Florida, down in south Florida. You're going to have guys in the Carolinas using Miradines. You're going to have Texans using Miradines. It's, 
It's really personal preference, or I guess the bait will determine the size of the bait in your region, what you're gonna use, whether you're gonna use a 27 or a 17, okay? The 27 being the XL version, the 17 being, well, the original version that I feel like nothing can turn it down. Now, as far as color goes, that really is gonna depend on the water clarity in your area. You know, some of us are, are blessed with lots of grass and clean water, and then some of us have more of a, a murkier or, or tannin water uh, situation. Some of us just have a lot of wind, like the guys in Texas, where the water does stay what I call sandy or turbid. And those will be the determining factors on what colors that you use. So for me, there's a lot of natural colors that are naturally going to happen this time of year because we don't have that much rainfall here in April. We start getting a little rainier toward the end of May and then June and July. It really starts to rain every day. You can count on it. But uh, Myrdings, definitely one of those types of baits. And, and the way Miralora set that up, they make heavy deans and they make, they sink at different rates and listen. I don't know how long you've been watching this channel, but there's ways to modify your muridines to make them sink faster or make them float back up so that they either sink shallower or actually float and you just dip them under the surface. So there's lots of plays in lots of areas and that's because there's plenty of threadfin out there right now. There's plenty of sardines out there right now. There's plenty of pinfish out there, shad, mullet. It's April, everything is there, all the bait is there. So this is going to be one of those baits that you have to have in your tackle bag. It really goes without saying, but I had to say it. So number five, the Myrdy. Number four, what's number four? Number four for me is, is going to be a four inch paddle tail. This happens to be the Z-Man mullet. This is their Mulletron color, but it's the diesel minnows. It's a, it's a little boot tail bait with a real thin spot behind the abdomen so that tail just kicks no matter what speed ramp you run it at. Whether you roll it really slow, tail moves a lot. You go really fast, it actually moves less because it has to have a tighter wiggle. Um, but it's, it, it's one of those baits if you're in really clear water that you can roll by fish and it doesn't spook them because it doesn't thump that hard. Um, Better for clear water situations. I rig this on their EWG hook, which is a weighted hook. Um, we've done a video on this. And if you look in the, in the description below, my guys will put that video in there uh, talking about the ZWG, which is their version of the perfect EWG hook. So you must check that out. But these baits can be Texas rigged. They can be rigged with a jig head. Um, a lot of you will probably choose to put a small ball head jig on this and work it under a popping cork. It is a very versatile tail. Uh, I prefer it a lot over the three inch tails just because I feel as if um, it, it's seen, it's more visible than a three inch tail. And, and for me, the little bit more slender body, especially when I rig it in this fashion, I have a lot of flats here that have tall grass. We have all kinds of manatee, gra uh, manatee grass, eel grass, if you will. We also have lots of turtle grass, and I can roll this very slow, especially with clients and family members on the boat that may not have quite as good a feel um, for where the lure is in the water column, and this keeps them from getting hung up. So it's a really good bait. Number four definitely would be that. So between the Miradine at five, and, and now you're looking at that four inch paddle tail being number four. I mean, many of you would just stop there and it's like, well, dude, that's all I'm gonna throw. But there's more. Um, as of late, we've been shooting some television shows and, and we've been shooting um, some really cool YouTube stuff on this. And you know what number three is gonna be. It's gonna be this one right here. And that is the unrigged four inch Mulletron, okay? This is the beer run color, which is very pinfish or croaker like, but the body looks like a mullet, okay? It is dense. I like it because it's heavy. If you are fishing in the wind or it requires you to make long casts because you're in a bigger center console, 
or casting distance, you got spread out fish, you have no idea where your fish are, um, overcast air, whatever, it is really tough to beat these four inch mullitrons. In fact, I've got lots of clients and even the members that are part of my subscription business, which is flatsclassuniversity.com, they reach out to me all the time. Hey, I've checked with Sodium USA. They don't have this right now. They're on back order. These things are on back order a lot because they're in super high demand. It's got nothing to do with supply chains or anything. It's just the baddest ass mullet on the market today, these unrigged ones, because you can rig them with anything. Now, you'll notice that I see how far that hook is set back in that. That's on the red fish eye, which is a 30 degree line tie up front here which in most environments in the springtime, whether you're from Texas to here, all the way to the Carolinas, a lot of our fish are in two to four foot of water. That's not a whole lot of vertical water column that you gotta cover, and this thing has one heck of a tail, wedge tail on it. It's a true swim bait. So it, it throws out a signature, it has drawing power, if you will. So being able to work that with a line kind of level and it doesn't have the 60 or 90 degree that pulls it up toward the top. It keeps it right there in the zone for a long period of time. This is a high demand bait. Anyone using this, you, you also gotta, if, if you have used it, you gotta know this is one of the best skipping baits that Z-Man has ever made because of how dense and how flat the sides. The body has kind of a triangular edge to it. So I commonly would, even casting gear, just backhand this thing and it'll go 10, 15 feet underneath docks, throw it up under the mangroves, just shot a great episode down in 10,000 islands out of Goodland, Florida with Captain Rob Walzak down there. This is all we used. This thing was a getter on the snook. So it's hard for me not to put it as number one. <laughs> and it's big sister, the Mullotron 4.5 line through. Well, if you've been watching this channel long enough, you know that one gets used a lot here too. So. That's number three. What is number two? About to share that with you right now. Number two would have to be the Top Dog Junior size. Um, these Top Dog Juniors, and whether you're using the, the skin series like this one here, which looks exactly like a mullet, uh, or you use some of our classic colors, I brought one out here, um, like pearl silver. These these baits this time of year, that they're like a baby rattle. I mean, it's click, clack, click, clack, click, clack. You can work these baits in six and eight feet of water and they'll draw strikes. I like to fish these baits when the wind is not rippling bad, but there's a little wind, there's a little overcast or early first light. Um, they're just a solid fish catcher in those situations. If I've got big wads of mullet that are working very hard and I'm trying to get that redfish, that trout, or maybe that big snook off that point to notice a bait, if you throw a paddle tail in that, if you don't get right here, you're not catching the fish. But if you're throwing this, they will come find it. And it's usually an alpha sized fish. Now, many of you know that I like to modify my mirror lures uh, with hooks. No relationship with this company at all. Um, but I use them a lot because their hooks don't rust. At least these don't. These are the fangs. And they're not cheap. BKK does not put cheap stuff out there. But I have found that when you hook a fish on these, they, they hardly ever get away. Uh, they hold up well on these types of plugs. That I think they make them perform even better and uh, for me, uh, the size two fang on this plug makes it an absolute monster snook getter for me. We're in spring now, we got those water temps that are consistently over 72 degrees and my snook are out there and they're smacking stuff around. When I hook one on this and I come tight on casting gear that might have 30 or 40 pound braid and I just come tight on that fish, I know he's not gonna open these hooks up. These are strong, they are sharp. And if you don't catch a snook on it, that will definitely put you in the hospital. You gotta be careful. <laughs> I wouldn't wanna be a weight fisherman and have a giant trout or a bull red swimming around me and this plug halfway out of its mouth and it swims between my legs. It could, it could make for an ugly afternoon at the ER. 
So you're probably wondering, with all this big stuff that we've been talking about, Bates 5, 4, 3, 2, what is number 1 going to be? Because we've kind of stepped it all the way up. Well, here we go. It's a small bait. It's actually Bugs Fishing. This is their flats bug. It's got a little curly tail on it. Comes in 3 16 and quarter ounce sizes. I love this. I love this lure. In fact, I rigged it on the rod right here so you could get a closer look at it. Um, I've been using this a ton for sight fishing because to me, the water right now where I live is the cleanest it's going to be. We're at that time of year where we don't have tons of rainfall. The fishing is good. It's not like, well, we had clear water CA in February, January, and February. And you didn't talk about this. Yeah, but we didn't have the water. We had negative lows and it was a tougher fish. Um, for me, when I get out there, it's tougher to fish in those conditions. Right now, we're starting to get higher tides. The fish are like, they're feeling more comfortable because the water's a little bit higher. And when you push pull or drift over the flat and you get these sight fishing opportunities, this little bait here, you, you knock it, you knock this one out there in front of them. And that thing, when it's wet swimming through the water, has such a beautiful action. It's got a little weed guard right there. It's got a nice hook in it. There's some mylar tied in there. The secret to all his stuff is he uses rabbit fur, which even breathes. So it's like, I can swim this and stop it. I can do that two or three cranks, let it fall. Two or three cranks, let it fall. It looks like it's just hopping like a shrimp through the water. And when I see fish out there, it's like, ooh, there's two reds right there. And I make a swing. I can't throw one of those big lures without spooking them because the water's clean. But with this setup, this is a, I've got this on a seven foot medium, moderate fast. You'll notice that I've got fluorocarbon on this reel. This is 12 pound fluorocarbon. This is my Bates Hundo reel right here. This is a fantastic little reel. It's an 8.1, which I like a faster reel when I'm sight fishing because if I make an errant cast, I can pick it up real quick. Or if I just finish a cast and there's a fish there, I can reel in fast and deliver it over here. The shorter rod is nice to have because you can drop a, a, a cast right on a fish. This is a good little swim bait rod and it's got just enough you know, backbone in it that on 12 pound fluorocarbon, I can really set the hook. You might like 12 pound fluorocarbon, are you using any leader? Yes, I've got right there. You can see I've got a little blood knot, okay? And I keep about 18 inches of 25 pound fluorocarbon leader on here. Uh, I use this primarily to sight fish my reds, but right now we've got black drum out there that I can sight fish. Uh, a lot of the larger southern stingrays have moved into two and three feet of water. They don't have the giant cobia on them, but they have those undersized cobia on them. It's fun to sight fish them with this rig. Just, it's, it's a true joy. But this little hundo reel only weighs five ounces and has 14 pounds drag. More than adequate. You look at it, you pick it up, and you're like, good. It's like helium. It's like, wow. But the nice thing about it, is even though it is in a BFS frame, it still packs one hell of a punch. Uh, and is, is such a great casting reel as far as minimizing back lashes and whatnot. It's, it's one of the reasons why this is the reel that actually turned me on to baits uh, and why I wanted to be there. And this is the Fitzgerald All Purpose. I'll give you the numbers right here. You can look at it. And it's just, it's a great set. It's definitely my number one thing I love to do toward the end of March and getting all through April before we start, well, before we really start tarpon fishing. So, kind of got an idea what May's stuff is going to be. But for right now, these are April's top five inshore baits. Okay, if you like what you're learning and seeing here as far as fishing advice, give us that thumbs up and hit that notification bell. I want you guys subscribe to this channel. We want to be your inshore authority in all things fishing in six feet or less. That's, that's my job. If you really dig what we're doing here uh, on Flat Scots YouTube, you'd probably love what we do at flatscotsuniversity.com. That is where we put big courses together to teach you how to be the ultimate inshore fisherman. 
That's all I've got for now. You guys keep those rods bent and I'll keep those videos coming.